For sure, yeah. I mean, when, when, I mean, anytime Steve Austin asks me a question and wants my opinion, I mean, obviously that's pretty damn cool considering what he's accomplished, where he's been, and how much I respect his knowledge. It's probably, a, again, it's probably a little less so just in the sense that I've, I, talk, I've, I mean, I've, just, I've talked to a lot of wrestlers over the decades before they were stars and then before they became big time, and Steve is one of them, and so the connection is sort of like that. I still see myself talking to that person uh, when I talk to him more than if, you know, it's like if President Obama called me now as an ex-president and started asking me questions about the economy, if that was my area of specialty, asked me about the economy or something about world affairs, that would be different than if I, like, knew him in college. So in that sense, the, the, it's, it's less, I'm less awestruck by the, by the notion, but I mean, there's no question with what he's accomplished and what he's proven in the industry um, that, yeah, being able to have a dynamic where he treats me as somebody that whose opinion matters and his, whose analysis he wants to put out there to his audience that he's cultivating is is an honor, and I, I absolutely respect that. Back in 95 and 96, did you tell him to go to All Japan, or did you kind of say, yeah, you probably should head to the WWF with Vince? That's a hell of a question. Um, as I said that, I was trying to remember uh, what I recommended. I, I'm tempted to say that I was pessimistic about Vince McMahon using him well, and I might have suggested All Japan. But, but I'm, I think if that's <laughs> true, I want to revise history because it was, in retrospect, <laughs> terrible advice. Yeah, let's pretend that you said, oh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I, I, I know I gave pros and cons. I, I do think I recommended to Samoa Joe, because I had a similar conversation to Samoa Joe. I, I'm pretty sure I recommended he go to TNA and not WWE. And that was, and, and that was at a time when I think, I think in retrospect at that moment it was probably the right thing, and it might even have been the right thing in the long run, um, depending on how things go now in this kind of final cha- likely the final chapter of his career where he makes the most money. Because um, I'm not sure back then that they would have treated him at the way that uh, it's because it it was only the, the 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 circumstances that led to his his uh, contemporary CM Punk getting a push was 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 in almost an accident of history. I mean, it, it was uh, Kurt Angle leaving and the ECW brand needing a top star and Big Show not being a good fit and uh, Paul Heyman having control and hitting it off with Punk and seeing something in him and then pushing Punk, and then when ECW went over, Punk had established himself enough, and WWE at that moment was willing to take a chance on somebody based on you know, the depth of, of the roster that they had. And so, and, and, but the, the thought was Punk would struggle in developmental for a long time and maybe not make the main roster, and I worried about that with Joe with his body type, that that would happen. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it does, there's not a lot of like – Fork in the road moments that I remember where wrestlers asked me their opinion, but I'm I'm pretty sure with Joe that I rec- that I thought TNA would offer better guaranteed money and give him more of a push and would be a better landing place for his skill set. Um, so I have that. To, I I think I, I think that's probably a good thing. But diff- different people would think, nah, he should have gone in developmental and maybe he would have made the money that Punk did and he'd be retired by now. <laughs> 